Hey Canucks fans, in light of the Luke Shen deal, do the Canucks still have one or two more trades left to make before Friday? I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, March the 1st. It's March already. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Speaking of subscribe, I'm at 9945, so I'm close to 9950. Gonna do a 9900 subscriber celebration tonight so join me on my live stream at 11 p.m and who knows maybe i hit the 10 clay mark sometime this week maybe trade deadline maybe on the weekend we shall see so join me tonight at 11 p.m to celebrate the 9900 mark even though we're closer to 9950 so that's your hint to subscribe 50 percent of my viewers do not are not subscribers actually so even if a few of you hit the subscribe button i'll be grateful and we'll get that much closer to 10 clay okay enough sub talk let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks. And Luke Shen marks the fourth trade now that the Canucks have made in the past month. Of course, it was the big Horvat trade to the Islanders. Then it was Lockwood and a seventh for Kratsov. Then it was Riley Stillman for Josh Bloom. And then just yesterday, it was Luke Shen going to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a third round draft pick this year. Now the Canucks, uh, and I tweeted about this yesterday, the Canucks have seven picks in the first four rounds this year and nine picks, uh, excuse me, eight picks overall. So they have two in the first round, and one of them is that top 12 project, pre, protected from the Islanders. So if it's not this year, it's next year. But let's say it's this year. So you have two in the first round. We have one in the second. We have two in the third. The extra is the one we got from the Luke Shen deal. And we have two in the fourth, and that one came from the Tyler Mott deal a couple years ago. So those are seven in the first four. Nothing in five. That was traded away in the Ethan Bear deal. Then we have our own six-round pick, and then nothing in seven because that was traded away in the OEL Garland deal two summers ago. So... Again, eight picks overall, you usually have seven because there are seven rounds, but seven of those eight picks are in the first four rounds. So maybe, I, that's part of my discussion, maybe the Canucks are looking to accumulate even more picks just so they can continue to, to stock their prospects or maybe package them up in some sort of one last gasp, one more big deal before the trade deadline. And I said right in the intro before Friday, obviously the trade deadline is Friday, noon our time, so you can trade on Friday as well. Not sure how much there's going to be to trade uh, when you look around the league. So much has happened. Started on the weekend and the Canucks were involved in a couple of those, like I said. And then we saw trades going all day Monday, all day Tuesday, including that late one for Jonathan Quick that was rumored last night and confirmed this morning. And, you know, I'll do another video down the road of uh, who, who are the trade deadline winners, who are the trade deadline losers. But right now, basically, everyone in the East is winning and everyone in the West is losing. But uh, you have teams like Vancouver, like St. Louis, like Nashville, all, all, and, uh, all selling off right now. So um, is the, the East is going to be so fun to watch. Toronto, Tampa, New York, New Jersey, Boston, whoever they have to play against. Uh, and does even Washington Islanders all make it in the playoffs? Um, that, that's a very exciting wild card race in there. And one team that's in that race is the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that's who I want to focus on for a few minutes now. When I talk about are the Canucks done making moves, I talked about this on my live stream yesterday. There are rumors out of Pittsburgh both uh, Pittsburgh writers and athletic writers like Shana Goldman saying that potentially the Canucks are still working on one more big move and that potential move could be potentially, a lot of potentials here with the Pittsburgh Penguins. There's some alliteration for you, the potential Pittsburgh Penguins. And they, um, so there's some talk about JT Miller. So the oh, snow, uh, snow just fell off the tree then and parked under, that was scary. Um, <laughs> let me gather my thoughts for a sec. So there, the JT Miller one's interesting because he was obviously signed to that eight-year extension. The no-movement clause doesn't kick in until July 1st. What kind of message are you sending if you're actively shopping him? Are you actively shopping him? But Pittsburgh makes sense because it's close to Ohio, his hometown. Whatever. Uh, uh, Pittsburgh's in a in a, a contention window now, whereas the Canucks aren't. So there's all those things to consider about JT Miller. My gut feeling is, and I've always said this, that I don't think JT Miller is going to be the one to be moved. Now, there's a lot of talk about Brock Besser. Rick Dollywell this morning said that there's two or three teams in on Besser still, but nowhere close because of the term and the money. And I'll talk about that in a second. Those two or three teams, I presume, are Pittsburgh, Minnesota, and maybe one other team, but there's two right there. Minnesota, we know the, the connections to his hometown. But um, let's talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins potentially. Now, Shana Goldman tweeted that it could be one of the two young defensemen that could come back, or maybe both, in Marcus Pedersen or Joseph. So that's one thing to keep an eye on. But when we focus on Besser, on who we're giving up, 
he just signed a three-year extension with a new three-year contract this past summer so this is year one of you of the three years it pays him 6.65 million dollars so just under 20 million dollars for the total six two more years after the season at 6.65 it's a lot of money that's almost uh, you know eight or nine percent of the, sal the current salary cap now besser kind of overshadowed of course by pd and kuzmenko and miller and hughes but besser has quietly had a decent season i wouldn't say a great season but a decent season he has 38 points in 52 games now only 11 goals in those 38 points so 11 goals 27 assists he has 38 points in 52 games that's 0.73 points per game which is pretty good 0.7 points per game over a full 82 game season is 56 points now and it's not even off his career average of 0.78 so remember we're talking about a guy who's almost a 0.8 per game player 0.8 point per game player excuse me that's that's like a 64 point season now the reason why Besser's never hit 64 points is unfortunately he's always injured his rookie season he had 55 points the next season he had 56 points then he had three seasons in the 40s, but two of those seasons, he, he only played 55, 56 games. One of them was lockout shortened, and the other one, was he was injured. So if you're getting 45, 46 points in 55 games, that's over 0.8 points per game. So this is a career 0.78 points per game player. This season, quietly, he's still at 0.73 points per game, so not, even, not that far off of his career average. So this is a, a, this is a top six player. But I just think uh, he's overshadowed on this team, um, sometimes in a good way, I guess. And he's not as dynamic as Pedersen, as Kuzmenko, as Miller, as Hughes. And when you see him on the ice, um, he, he simply doesn't look like he's got a lot of gusto. He, we, he's never been a fast skater, but we, he could always rely on his shot and his quick release. And that seems to have eluded him this season as well. Now, he's still good defensively. He's still responsible. He's a good two-way player. He's got a strong hockey IQ. He still passes the puck like it's a grenade, but that's a that's for another vlog. So overall, what kind of are we expecting Besser to be moved? Do you want him to be moved even? And if you move him, what do you have to do? You do you have to retain twenty five to thirty three percent of his salary? I know the Canucks don't want to do that, um, so that's why I think this is tricky. But maybe as especially in the East, as teams continue to load up up until Friday, maybe a Pittsburgh becomes a bit more desperate. And maybe they are able to work out a deal. So Canucks fans, let me know what you think. Do you think Besser will be dealt? Do you want him to be dealt? And what do you think? Uh, where do you think he could be dealt to? And for what kind of return? I know there's a lot of hypotheticals there. That's the point of having these videos is for us to create some discussion. So let me know in the comments below. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate. Perform and transform personal training and weight loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates. Legendary Justin Credible. Legendary Andrew Chang. Hall of Fame and franchise members. And thanks to all of you. Always appreciate you. Never take you for granted. Subscribe, like this video, leave a donation, become a member, upgrade your membership, and I'll see you tonight at 10, no, 11 p.m. Don't come at 10, you'll be an hour early. Come at 11 p.m. I know it's late, but that's that's my jam. Come at 11 p.m. for a 9,900 subscriber giveaway. And of course, leave a comment below your thoughts on whether or not you think Besser will get moved. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. See you tonight at 10. No. See, what I got to stop that. Start again. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. See you at 11 tonight. God bless and go Canucks go.